Now let's talk about practical applications of safety on the job site. North Star has safe work practices and safe job procedures. The difference is safe work practices are positive guidelines for performing tasks that help to minimize risks, whereas safe job procedures are step-by-step -step descriptions of how to complete a job safely. For example, safe work practices cover things like fueling equipment and towing, while safe job procedures cover things like equipment, materials, and PPE for specific job procedures. Pre-job hazard assessments, or JHAs, are completed prior to starting work on a specific work activity and are very similar to a safe job procedure. Supervisors and workers must ensure that all safe work practices, job procedures, and JHAs are followed. These can all be found in the North Star HSE manual. Speaking of manuals and safe work practices, remember to always consult the MSDS information about products the company uses for safe handling of hazardous substances. MSDS information sheets are located in binders in the safety office, the shop, worksite offices, and supervisor's trucks. Working alone is considered a hazardous practice and therefore must also have procedures to minimize and or eliminate risks. North Star has established a work alone policy according to OHNS regulations which states that a supervisor must prepare a hazard assessment for the worker who is working alone to determine things like the method of communication, the length of time between contact and other safety requirements for the job at hand. Consult your supervisor before working alone and never leave your job site without first contacting your supervisor. This brings us to the sign in and sign out sheets. You're required to sign in to every worksite and the North Star shop. This will give a clear head count in case of an emergency, so that if required, emergency responders can account for all site personnel. Signing in and out can save lives. Hazard Assessments and Reporting OH&S legislation states that an employer must prepare a report of the hazards assessed and the methods used to control or eliminate the hazards identified. Some key points, hazard assessments must be in writing and dated. Workers must be involved in the assessment process. Hazard assessments must be conducted for all work performed, regardless of the nature of the work. When should a hazard assessment need to be repeated? 1. At reasonable intervals to prevent the development of unsafe work habits. 2. When a new work process is introduced. 3. When a work process changes or the work site is altered. All hazards must be reported. Then the hazardous condition must be repaired, replaced, controlled, barricaded, or eliminated before work continues. Even when there is a hazardous condition on an access road, please notify the dispatch office of the hazard before continuing on. Along with hazard assessments, you may also need a safe work permit for things like confined space entry, lockout, tagout, ground disturbance, etc. Safe work permits will come with a checklist to review all potential hazards and controls. Incident and near-miss reporting. All incidents must be reported immediately no matter how minor. Fill out an incident report form and hand it in to your supervisor, the HSE coordinator or maintenance department. An investigation will follow. Failure to report an incident could result in disciplinary action. For near misses or when there is no contact, these need to be documented. Document the situation on a near miss form. Near miss reports help management to determine if trends are developing or changes to procedures are necessary. Routine planned inspections are an effective and proactive method of identifying hazardous and unsafe conditions and to ensure safety standards and regulatory requirements are being followed. Pre-use inspections are required for pickup trucks, transport trucks, pile driving machines and equipment, rigging, mobile equipment, PPE, and tools. Any equipment found to be defective must be tagged and taken out of service. Inspections are not only for reviewing the conditions of equipment, but also for work sites, workplaces, and work habits. Inspections must be in writing and completed as many times as required. Along with inspections, North Star's maintenance program helps to keep equipment in top condition. Scheduled maintenance will take place based on manufacturer's specifications, company requirements, and or by industry standards. Records of maintenance are kept in the maintenance office. Any truck, equipment, or part that breaks down or is found to be defective upon inspect must be reported immediately to the site supervisor so the item can be repaired or replaced. One of the simplest ways to have a safe work environment is to have a clean and organized environment.
Good housekeeping practices are important and apply to every area on the job, including the yard, shop, vehicles, and trailers. The basic rule is pick up, clean up, put up, or dispose of. It takes very little time on a daily basis to keep your work environment safe and tidy. Do not leave a mess behind. All reportable spills must be reported to the job site supervisor, who will fill out a spill report. Depending on the location, product, and amount, a spill could also be required to be reported to a provincial or federal agency. When it is safe to do so, clean up the spill, put the materials in a plastic bag, and dispose of in an approved waste disposal bin. If there isn't a disposal bin on site, then bring the materials back to the yard for proper disposal. All oxyacetylene cylinders must be transported in an upright position and always be secured in an appropriate support. Regulators must be removed and cylinders capped at the end of each day and before transporting. Empty cylinders must be tied to racks marked for empty cylinders and full cylinders on racks marked for full ones. Never leave a cylinder lying on the ground, empty or full. Keep all flammable liquids in properly marked containers and stored in suitable areas, acetone, fuel, oil, etc. Refer to MSDS information for storage and handling of flammable liquids.